Mesdames et messieurs, bonjour et bienvenue dans le programme francophone hebdomadaire de Africa News and Views. Cette semaine, nous avons eu la chance de rencontrer Madame Hanna Haile, directrice du Centre culturel Zelan. My name is Hannah Haile. I am the founder and director of Zellan Creative and Cultural Center. So Zellan Creative and Cultural Center is basically a space that's, that is dedicated to um, contemporary expressions of art, identity, and culture. So basically the inception of the center has been something that I, I had wanted to do for a very long time. Um, but now I was able to create a very good team around me that was together we were able to basically make, make this dream come to life. Um, one of the reasons, the biggest reason that we wanted to, to create this space is because there aren't any really opportunities for young people to be able to openly express themselves, um, whether it's through contemporary culture or art or creativity, there, there's a huge lack of space. And so we wanted to be able to address that and give an opportunity for growth, experimentation, questioning and discussing a lot of the important topics that young people don't get to, don't get to discuss usually. And so we really believed that the lack of space is is hindering what could be the modern Ethiopia. And modern Ethiopia is not, in essence, a, a replica of something that we see elsewhere. It shouldn't be something that is inspired by Dubai or any Western ideologies. It's really that we needed to invest our time and money and a lot of our energy into grooming a whole generation of people and supporting a whole generation that had a voice but didn't know where to put that voice, didn't know where to put their energy. So we really wanted to be able to create a space, a safe space at that um, for, for growth, for development. And, and what that means is also delving deep into our own tradition and our own ancestral truths, you know. And so when you're able to do that in a safe space, you're able to create things. And it is really in the belief that culture is not just about preservation. And I think that's one of the things that really sets us apart from a lot of initiatives that, has, that are taking place in, in, in Ethiopia. Um, I think that there is a, such a deep history in Ethiopia, as everybody knows, right? And there's a, a lot of proud history, and we should be proud of that. But then, what does it mean to move forward is a question that we're not really answering. Um, there's a lot of work around preservation of culture and art and dance. And I think that what we need to do now is, is understand what is the next step? What can young people do? Where do young people, where do young people belong? Um, I find that One of the most impressive cultural assets of Ethiopia, for example, is Lalibela, right? And people are in awe of it, and they should be. I was in awe. Like, the first time I went to see it is something that I hold really dear to my heart because I think that type of conviction, that type of belief in doing something great is so amazing. And it's really, it's really disheartening to believe that today we don't have that. What is that expression today? What are we taking... To, to inspire us today, what does our city look like? It doesn't look like anything like us, right? And that is really disturbing. I, I don't like the fact that we go out and it looks like a bad version of Dubai, right? Um, and that's, that's really depressing in a way because there's so much history and so much inspiration, but we don't give enough space for that. And culture is not meant to just be preserved. It's meant to be lived. It's meant to be uh, developed. It's meant to be to be practiced, it's a living culture. So this is a bit about, of, it's a bit of, this is a bit of what we want to do. It's, it's to be able to question what is living tradition instead of acceptance of tradition or passing off tradition. What does it mean to live our traditions? And so through the center and through multiple activities, this is a bit of what we want to do. Um, I mean, there's also other things like supporting uh, other creative and cultural uh, based businesses, for example. There's a lot of, for example, there's, we don't think about how much the, the small and medium enterprises are, are, are actually 
benefiting from creative and cultural, uh, culturally fusing things, you know? Our culture is not meant to be just be entertainment for tourism, it's not. So we actually have to be able to incorporate into different businesses, into different initiatives, uh, young people who make clothes, like even the jacket I'm wearing today is made by a local designer who's now basically has her own business and she's growing her own business and she has all these big dreams. And so there's many people like her who would love an opportunity to be able to work on this and, and develop it, but they don't have that kind of support system. So with also within our center, we also have a hub where we support creative initiatives like that, whether it's through um, branding support or uh, just basically giving them the networks that we have or um, or through our expertise we want to be able to support a new generation of, of creatives that are working towards professionalizing this whole sector um, so we opened on march 14th officially it was our open house for the public um, we had a day of uh, basically an afternoon until midnight kind of uh, event where multiple people could come and enjoy our space and um, we had artists that like like the art that you see behind me we had um, our gallery opened we had a show with Ethiopian records and it was really a step into opening up our space officially Unfortunately for us, um, the day before, on March 13th, was the very first uh, official corona uh, virus case that the government had uh, announced. And as you can imagine, it was a very, a very difficult day for us. It was, I mean, we're an event space, so we had to quickly come to a decision that we had to close because there was no there was no way we could keep our place open consciously. Like, we had to make sure that um, this was way before so even the, the the national the state of emergency had been uh, had been declared. So we opened on the 14th. We closed on the 15th. Um, it was it was hard. I, I won't lie. I mean, the truth is, I was waking up every day basically in dread, panic. Um, so much stress because this is a rented space. Um, what we had um, hoped for was to host events and that was our main form of income. And yeah, so it, it was really difficult for, for all of us, for our whole team. Um, but I'm actually really proud to say that we bounced back pretty quickly. We had to reassess where our energy was going. Um, we were working a lot on, on the physical space. Um, and that's where months of our work had gone to because what Addis lacked was a space. It wasn't an online space, to be honest, because those already exist in one form or another. And what we needed was a place to gather, right? And so it was a difficult decision, but basically we moved all our activities online. So the gallery that had opened and closed uh, within a day was then in a week uh, we had put it online on our on our website. We we created a virtual 360 degree uh, gallery, and it was the first in Ethiopia, and I think it still is, um, where you can basically go on our website and you can navigate uh, the screen and you're able to see uh, to visit to visit these amazing art pieces. Um, and so we had to, we were in, in process of, of publishing a book as well. We, we turned that into an online book. It was a, a book that we had edited and also had uh, done some, we had done the, the, art, the artwork for it as well. So we made that into an online uh, downloadable free PDF book. It was a book of poetry by Alexander Hiskias, uh, which is, who's a very promising young author. We started to do online, um, online interviews. So this was one of the things where we launched an online interview. We were calling it Zalan Interviews, where we introduced um, Ethiopian artists, contemporary artists, to the community, basically. And so because of Corona, we couldn't do it here. We couldn't do it using our tools. So what we did was people had to stay home. So we said, OK, you're staying home, but can you use the tools you have to record your stuff? And we'll do all the, all the post-production. So they would record themselves. Uh, answering questions that we had given them. And so we were able to do that. Um, so we, we were actually continuously readjusting 
what we can do with what we have, with making sure that the people that are involved in the projects can do everything online, can access them online, can collaborate with us online. Um, so beyond the, the Zalan interviews, we also launched two quite um, well-received podcasts, two podcast series. One is called One on One and that's the one I host and it's about art and culture in Ethiopia and it's in English. Um, we talk a lot about what does architecture mean and just the basics but really about contemporary identities. Um, and then we have another show where um, it's me and a friend of mine. Um, it's called Magdading with Miki and Hanna. But basically, Magdading is a kind of a quirky show of two friends trying to navigate what contemporary Ethiopia is for them. Uh, we talk about relationships and different, um, and you know, what does it mean to have children? Um, what what does our culture mean? How do we support our families? Different kinds of topics that we feel um, are appealing to young people that are talking on taboo subjects that mostly are not really often talked about. So these are the, some of the activities that we have done. In terms of income, um, we, were, we are in, in a lot of different talks with a lot of different stakeholders within our community because we don't believe that the work of this type of magnitude really should fall on one or two individuals. It's really a community responsibility we're talking about because Zellan is about creating communities. And so we do have a lot of plans and all of those plans are not just about sustaining our space, it's about an ecosystem that has been really hurt by COVID-19 because for a lot of um, artists and creatives, it's the, a lot of the work that they do is either on freelance work or on contract um, so, or event-based. So these are the most hit at this time. And so we really believe that it's important to allocate um, resources around, around our community. And we're really, really working hard. Um, we, we have some, some interested people who, are, who we're communicating with. We have various plans and um, coming ahead. Um, we were, our landlord had previously given us uh, two months free rent, which was really helpful for us, but now we have started paying rent again. So, of course, we're not in a good place, but we're really, really working a lot. Um, we are in contact with a lot of different stakeholders as well. And I think this is also an opportunity where I would love to invite anybody who really believes that they want to participate in something like this to really contact us. I know that a lot of people are interested, but they don't know how to help we have a game plan. I really, I want them to come in contact because this is everyone's responsibility. It's not just a few individuals. We get asked this a lot and I'm really happy to answer it because I think it, it, it in essence, says a lot about who we are and how we think. Um, so Zellan in Amharic means um, nomadic I, I, in a sense. Um, and the reason we chose this is because of we, because we really believe that creatives and free thinkers are beyond are beyond borders. It's beyond just Ethiopia. It's beyond just our continent. It's really a, a mass. Um, it's really be, it's really a, a community of people who can really come together because it's about ideology. It's about uh, it's about coming together and having a conversation based on not what makes you you because of where you come from, but because of what we would love to build for, for the world. Um, we really believe that thinkers should be free. They, should be, they shouldn't be held on, they shouldn't be um, restricted. And we really believe in that. And I think in Ethiopia, with how conservative our culture is, this is something within the contemporary identity we would really like to push because it's not about correcting each other, it's about building together. It's about building communities together beyond what we think defines us. And so we really want to push that and to really push that kind of thinking where we don't hold on to, to things that don't necessarily matter in a sense. So, um, yeah, we really, we really want, we really feel close to this word because it's how we live and how we think as well. There's always a lot people want to say about our generation of people um, in Ethiopia. I guess it's, it happens in each generation, but um, but I think that I'm really, really 
proud to be in a time where there's so many people with so much talent and starting to find their own voices. Um, and I think there's, a, there's really a lot we can do if the opportunity is there. And this opportunity, as Ethiopians, we really have to think beyond coming together when things are bad, you know, when things are at their worst. Um, I think that we have our own social systems that can really benefit us. For example, when you're thinking of Ukub or, um, uh, or other kind of systems that are there, yeah, like Mahaber, you know, and there are these, these systems that are there to support you. And we can build on those in a, in a modern world where we can support one another. And it's not just about coming together when someone has died and you put money for their funeral or something. You need to be able to support people when they are there and they're asking for your help and I think a lot of young people are there asking and I think the private sector and individuals who have the, cap the capability they really have to come to come through they really have to step up it's not about saying this generation isn't doing da 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 but like if you really feel that you really have to come through and say you know what this isn't a way I can support you and if you don't have the money you have the experience you have the the mind to sit and just talk to people and even that is so beneficial and there's so many things we can do with that so please reach out to us and it's not I, I, really my plea here is not for young people just young people to to reach out but it's for all generations who feel like they're losing something to really come through and, and have these interactions with us so we can really start to build something that we can all be proud of Arts TV vous remercie pour votre attention et vous souhaite un excellent weekend prenez soin de vous Marianne Kualo, Addis Abeba Éthiopie